Back in 2018, a company in the crypto space called Zango came out with this revolutionary new way to create a self-custody crypto wallet that they claim is more secure than a hardware wallet. This obviously piqued my interest and I decided to dive in and see what their so-called MPC wallet is. And we're gonna go over what that means, how it applies to you and what I truly think about this as going into crypto security with much skepticism as is my job. So let's get right into it. So again, this company called Zango created the first, what they're calling self-custodial wallet, but in this self-custodial wallet, they actually have something very similar to a, a BTC multi-sig structure where their private key is distributed across multiple parties, except for multi-sig is for BTC only. This wallet structure actually takes the private keys for multiple blockchains. It could be EVM chains or Ethereum virtual machines. It could be Solana, it could be Bitcoin. It could be several other blockchains. But in today's video, I wanted to kind of go over it with you, let you know what I think about it. And it's actually quite interesting whether or not I'm gonna do some more research and go into whether I would actually use it for my crypto, kind of what the risks are, or some of the things that I'm a little bit skeptical of, but let's get right into it. So let's cover the most basic thing. So this wallet type is called an MPC wallet. So let's define what that is and how it works. MPC stands for Secure Multi-Party Computation, and it's been in the field of cryptography for over 30 years. Generally, MPC allows two or more parties to jointly compute a function output without revealing their inputs. For example, Using MPC, a group of friends can securely calculate their average salary, their output, without revealing how much each of them get as their inputs. So this is just a way for everyone to hold private information individually and being able to plug in that, those inputs to get a secure output without revealing any private or any sensitive information. Pretty interesting. So when it pertains to cryptocurrency wallets, MPC allows the creation of a secure key management system without a single point of failure the proverbial private key, in which multiple parties, for example, a remote server and a mobile phone, can jointly perform all needed cryptographic functions like key generation, transaction signatures, and transaction verification, while neither of the parties reveal their respective secrets. It is important to highlight that in MPC, a single private key is never generated. Split or reconstructed in the process. This makes it superior to traditional models based on a single private key. So I'm gonna jump in there for a second. This is really compelling, and it's basically not taking one private key and splitting it equally three ways. It's similar to multi-sig in the sense that if I have one wallet or one private key, I could have one third of it scrambled and encrypted and have it on say a remote server, and I could have one being mine, one being my wife, one being my friend, one being a business partner, however many you wanted to determine, and then you could ultimately choose how many of those inputs are required to sign and confirm a transaction. Generating, basically plugging in all inputs together to create one valid single private key where you have to have a minimum number of inputs to authenticate it, right? So by implementing this type of MPC technology, consumer-focused wallets and institutional services can securely design an on-chain asset management system that removes the single point of failure of a private key. Interesting. This offers a more secure self-custodial option by protecting against both private key theft, as there is no one single private key to steal, and key loss, as each party can back up their secret input individually in a way that does not expose and compromise the entire system. So to recap, this design offers a number of advantages, as they say. One, it's easy to recover. Two, there's no single point of failure for phishing. That's pretty good. And it's entirely user controlled. So we're gonna go into some of the details of this, but right off the bat, this is an interesting format of the cryptography and the private key generation process. So if they're suggesting that I back up, let's say you, me, and one other party have an input in this particular case to the wallet, and I back up my input to the cloud, which generally shouldn't happen if it's secure and it's private, it's access to a private key. What they're indicating is that in this case, in this example I'm giving, I only have one third of the private key. So unless all three of us access or upload our private key, portions to the same cloud or the same thing, it's useless. It's basically having multiple keys to open one lock, so to speak. There is some validity to that. 
I definitely wouldn't recommend ba using a backup because one of the keys is their server of whoever runs the wallet. In this case, it would be a company called Zango and Coinbase and Exodus is going to be releasing this as a feature as well for institutions and for larger custodians. And I'll talk more about them specifically in the next video. But I wanted to kind of go over this is that this is an interesting concept where they're claiming you don't need a hardware wallet to have self custody to protect your private keys. What they're saying, and there's truth to this, is that there's vulnerabilities in having a seed phrase and having the entire private key in yourself. The way I look at it is that I like to be in control of my entire private key. I don't have to trust any other parties. I don't have to rely on any other parties. If there's a single point of failure, that's my responsibility. And it means if something bad happens, there's no one else to blame but me. On the flip side of that, if I ever pass on, well, which everyone will one day, but if I'm trying to educate someone such as my next of kin or wife or family or whatever, want to pass on my crypto after I die, it's gonna take a lot of education for them to learn how to back up, get my seed phrase, recover my hardware wallet and my encrypted password in order to take those funds and import into a different wallet. But I digress. This is an interesting concept and I'm gonna do more research, but it's technically been around since 2018, but it's not been used a lot, but it is becoming more adopted and more used by different wallets and different providers. And I'm gonna cover that specifically when it comes to Exodus tomorrow, because it is one of the self-custodial wallets that I like to use and have used in the past for multiple different reasons. So next thing on here that I wanna cover is why, M why they say MPC is a better user experience than a seed phrase wallet. And I actually, in this portion, I'll read it, but I, I do agree here. The user experience, the easier it can be, the more adoption we're gonna have. With the more adoption that we're gonna have, it obviously benefits everyone, but you also have to dumb it down which can present vulnerabilities, it can prevent mistakes and, and slip up. I'm of the belief that I want people to, I want it to be a little more difficult so people take it more seriously, they become more educated, but I'm also not naive enough to believe that everyone is like me that's going to deep dive and understand this and really learn and adhere to all the security measures because it's time intensive and it takes a lot of research, it takes a lot of hours to take on that kind of self-responsibility. I wish everyone was like that, but I realize that most people aren't and they're gonna go with the path of least resistance. But I digress, let me, let me get to this next part. This type of recovery is immediately more familiar and far less scary for the majority of people. Fair enough. Almost everyone who has created an account of any kind online knows how to recover their login using an email, trusted contact, cloud backup, and or their own biometric scan. This would be like Touch ID or Face ID for iPhone, for example. This is why these types of recoverability are crucial for bringing new people into the crypto ecosystem. Implementing familiar solutions for recovery will allow more people to feel comfortable using crypto. Once in the ecosystem, some will want different types of security or options with a low centralization risk. There is nothing preventing anyone from using multiple wallets once they have started using crypto. In fact, it is encouraged to use more than one wallet when storing crypto assets. So far, I agree. You definitely don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket, so to speak. So let's get to what they're getting at here. There is, however, a huge barrier to entry with the majority of wallets for the majority of people. Seed phrases. Having a single seed phrase that can move the entire contents of an account in an instant can be scary. Some people are willing to rely fully on themselves, me, to keep something this important safe. Most people are not. So as I just mentioned, I agree with this. Most people aren't willing to put in the work, the time, the research, and the security measures that I personally am to get this done. So what's the trade-off? Do we keep everybody out that's too lazy or unwilling to learn how to protect themselves? Or do we make protocols that are in some sense untested and maybe riskier, but make it easier for the end user? And there's no obvious answer to this. It's really personal preference. And one is time tested, at least over the last 30 years in terms of cryptography and in the last 14 years in, in terms of Bitcoin, but only time will tell here. So it says, kind of wrapping this up, having a path to enter crypto for the first time, try applications and hold assets where users don't have to worry about a seed phrase is critical for the next 1 billion people to join the world of Web3. So they're not just talking about regular Bitcoin wallets here, they're talking about the entire Web3 ecosystem, interacting with dApps, NFTs, smart contracts, everything. Everything in the crypto ecosystem 
where you truly own your information and you truly own your private keys. It says, MPC wallets do not use seed phrase. MPC wallets replace the traditional private key with two independently created mathematical secret shares. One share is stored on your mobile device and the other is on the company server. And in this case, it's Zango. With no single point of failure, even if something happens to one of the shares, no one can access the crypto but you. Now, again, this is still relying on a third party. Let's say I lose the backup. Let's say things go awry for any reason. One of the shares is still on their server, but they still need my share in order to sign or confirm a transaction. So just thinking out loud before I get further into this, what? how is that any different than a seed phrase? If I lose my seed phrase, I'm SOL. And if I lose my backup to one part of this, where I need two of these factors, their server and my backup, or my portion of the share of the seed phrase, what's the difference there? If one of us loses them, no one can access. But I think they're about to explain that kind of going forward. It says, to understand the type of cryptography behind MPC, it's helpful to learn that TSS, which is threshold cryptography, which is a subfield of MPC, in this cryptography, cryptographic operations are defined with a threshold assumption in mind. It is assumed that a, at least a threshold of the parties involved in the computation are acting honestly and not controlled by an attacker at the same time. It could be two parties or more. So again, part of this goes, goes into trust. MPC cryptography is gaining adoption. Now, while Zango is the first crypto wallet to support MPC for consumers, companies like Fireblocks have been managing billions of dollars of assets for some of the world's leading crypto institutions for years. Coinbase recently announced support for an MPC-powered dApp browser inside of their custodial crypto wallet. As MPC offers the optimal balance between on-chain self-custody, wallet security, and crypto recoverability, it's only a matter of time until MPC becomes widely adopted. I do tend to think that this is right. And what I mean by that is it is only a matter of time. It's still better than having custodial manage all your funds where they control everything. MPC at least deviates from that a little bit and kind of gives part of the control to you and part of the control to them. It's sort of dividing the access and the control, which, which is better than having 0% control on a custodial platform. I think that as time goes on, we're gonna get more enhancements and more security measures that will allow us to be more secure in this type of thing. And I, as much as I hate to say it, I do agree that most people are going to be attracted to something like this so that they don't feel like if they screw up, they're going to lose all their money. They're going to be attracted to a solution that has someone else part of the transaction, even though I don't personally believe that's the best model. But this isn't about me. It's about most other users. So just to recap, if we weren't clear on how MPC or multi-party computation how it works. Just to simplify this and boil it down, MPC works by splitting the traditional private keys into multiple pieces, distributing them in multiple places to ensure no one person has full access to the traditional private key. The major advantage here is that the private key is always used in a distributed manner. When a transaction signature is required, the parties involved, and in this case, Zango, there are two, the Zango server and your user phone, in order to separately run a computation to make whatever you wanted to happen on the blockchain happen. The best part of this process is no single entity can ever get access to any private key. There is no single point of vulnerability. Even if an attacker tried to get access to one of the two shares, they can't access all of the secret shares simultaneously, making your digital assets much safer than in a traditional private key architecture. It's pretty compelling. I'll have to validate this and run some tests and use the wallet, which I admittedly have not done yet, but I will do that on the next video, which we're going to cover Exodus implementing this, which is huge. They have a lot of users on that self-custodial wallet. So I'm actually going to download this wallet, find out how it works, go into depth and see how the user experiences, look for security flaws, look for security loopholes, try to find a way to break it, so to speak. And I want to cover the last thing on different blockchains. So it says a major advantage of MPC, in addition to its security and recoverability benefits, includes the fact that it is chain agnostic. Unlike multi-sig, which is Bitcoin only, approaches not every blockchain. MPC can be applied to many. Zango, in this case, actively contributes to open source MPC material on GitHub. And then of course, who's already using it? A number of billion dollar institutions are currently using MPC technology, including Fireblocks, 
Coinbase, and of course Zango. So this is one wallet that's sort of been off the radar because it's different, right? It sounds like they've been implementing it and testing it with institutional money. Granted, they have billions of dollars in I don't want to say TVL, but billions of dollars being used by this technology. So I really think it's interesting. There's obviously some hesitations that I have just initially reading about it, but I do actually want to use the wallet, experience it for myself and see what kind of vulnerabilities or potential issues have. I don't like the idea of having a third party, in this case, like Zango, having access to one part of the private key. Now, they just explained that even if there's an attacker, there's no way that they could have the multi shares put together, but I can't access it without them. In this case, it's like the seed phrase is like, well, if the company goes out of business, BIP39 seed phrase compatibility, I can then import it to any other wallet. In this case, if Zango server has one of the shares and one of their servers become compromised, then what do you do, right? There's no backup, there's no fail safe. And we're gonna go into that in a deeper video coming up here. So I know this is getting kind of long. I thought this was extremely interesting and I'm gonna do more deep dive research on it. Let me know what you guys think. Is this the type of wallet where you'd be interested in trying it out to store NFTs, test some Bitcoin transactions, and having the idea of having no seed phrase for you to worry about, just having a seamless user experience, not having to worry about a seed phrase, only having email backups and biometric authentication backups. What do you guys think about that? To me, this sounds very similar to what BitKey is doing with Square's hardware wallet, except theirs is Bitcoin only and it's using multi-sig, where you store one of the keys on their server, one of the keys on the device, and then one of the keys on your phone. Multi-sig is very secure, but it's only as secure as the people or the, or the users that have access or the servers in this case that have access to it. So right off the bat, that's my initial concern. But I digress. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. If you found this interesting and you found this helpful and you want me to dig more into what this technology does and other people that are using it, go ahead and click right here on this video to wait for my next video. And until next time, Crypto Renegade out.